Another way that you, students can become certified of mastery of a topic is to complete the topic through project-based learning or modeling. So in addition to the mastery system that I explained in another video, these are other ways to actually conduct the class. So project-based learning is essentially, instead of doing quizzes, instead of turning in notes, instead of watching videos, instead of doing any of that, although uh, I do recommend the students that engage in any of these still spend that home time if they decide to, um, engaging in additional access to the content through things like videos, textbook, or stuff that you would do during stage one of the mastery system. However, you're not going to be kind of required to do that necessarily because the, the principle of these things is that you learn by doing. So on project-based learning, you will have a series of tasks associated with completing a capstone project that is grounded on the topic of interest in that unit. And usually these will involve really high critical thinking and creative tasks, which force the student to do something unique and applicative to the real life. So for example, if I'm doing something on the unit on velocity in a physics class, I may have the student uh, do a series of tasks that will force him to understand what velocity is like, which involve maybe, you know, figuring out how fast cars move in the road and that, how long that takes a person to go from one place to the other on a daily, um, uh, you know, drive to work, commute, so to speak. Uh, we'll have them do maybe a project about the traffic problems in the city where they live. And then as part of that project, they will also have to come up with possible solutions for that traffic project and end up doing a capstone presentation where they present that to their classmates. And if it's good enough and their research is good enough, which is I usually push students to do, they can actually create something that they can share with stakeholders, um, you know, people in government, people in the community to make, see, to make a difference. And that's usually what I try to push project-based learning towards. But it could also be things like challenges, you know, activities or projects that challenge the student to solve a problem or a series of problems which will force the student to figure it out about the topic. It will involve the student doing research. It will involve the student putting together a presentation, communicating to other students what they found. That's what project-based learning is like. And modeling uh, is going to be a reversed engineering of a topic. So Isaac Newton figured out things about physics. Darwin figured out things about biology. Avogadro figured out things about chemistry. You have all these famous scientists. How do they do it? They didn't know those things. Nobody told them they were things. Well, they based it on their writer already knew from other things that they've done in the past. So when students come into my class, they have some knowledge. Based on that knowledge, I have students undo activities, labs, experiences, that through the labs, they discovered the things I want them to know about the topic. Specifically, in modeling, you tend to come up with uh, a lot of mathematical routines to to uh, actually can, that can actually be used right to predict future results. Then you use those results in a challenge of some sort or a performance task where you actually learn what you figured out through the lab to make a prediction that can be used to solve problems. So in other words, instead of being receiving instruction, you actually learn by being the scientist, becoming the Isaac Newton, the Darwin, or the Avogadro, or whoever. And I love these types of study. I still think a good student that wants to score an A and wants to go to college needs to, if they choose to do it this way, get involved with that extra effort of going to, through a direct instruction method or a, a student center instruction, whatever it is, where they actually um, flip and access the content in the same kinds of men as you would do in stage one. But the advantage of these is that they're more you know, practically oriented and actually they, they, they're more real life application than, than a lot of other uh, typical classrooms are going to be like. And it focuses more on the development of skills that a scientist and a thinker needs to have than just learning what something else already discovered for you. That's not to say that students that do mastery uh, option don't do those things. Doing the mastery practice process, they will they have the choice. So they are they can certainly do projects that are just like that. And I do tend to push them to do those kinds of things. Like I said at the end of the other video, any project that's creative, critical thinking, uh, inquiry, uh, collaboration, and use of technology will get bonuses. By the way, I forgot to say it on that video, but you would also get bonuses for anything that's real life application. So 
Either way, you're going to get the same thing. This is just a different way to think about it. And it goes back to that other video that I talked about, the, the order of practice or where you put the practice. This is practice first or even practice only, uh, so to speak. Although I suggest to flip and always add that instructional component at some point before trying to get to the final assessment. So if you're in a class that's doing modeling, good for you because it can be a lot of fun. What do you base learning to?